No, Mr. Bond. I expect you to die. Ow! The first question comes from Alino Hello Hello Halal La 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 um, and they asked, how do you respond to the comment, it's just a phase? Now I would say that for these, I, I don't really take notice. A lot of people have their own opinion and their opinions are like assholes. Everybody has one, and sometimes they stink. I guess that's not really answering the question. Basically, how I respond is that I don't really care what other people think. At the end of the day, it's my life. I don't care what other people think about my life because in a day, they go off and live their life. Just have a sip of the good old wake-up juice. Oh, that's hot. That's very hot. And coffee. Mm -hmm. The next question comes from Lightboy, and they've literally been commenting on my video for probably about three years now, the exact same comment, and it is, uh, are you cute? Cute, 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 cute. I'll let you guys answer that one in the comments below. Am I cute? I don't know. Nora S asks a really good question. When you were still figuring out your sexuality, what helped you go through it? There was quite a few things. So I have a couple of gay mates. Um, one of them, he came out in high school and basically he was just, he was, he's so charismatic. He's so like, just pushes himself forward in life. And he's basically been my idol in life for a long time. He just basically gets on with life and he does stuff which nobody else I've seen doing at our age which he really helped me out with that because he, he came out in high school and it didn't affect him and he was just proud to be who he was and I felt like I want I want that pride. I want to be happy with myself and confident in myself. And songs. Um, I feel like a really powerful song for me when I was coming out was uh, Macklemore. Um, I think it's I Can't Change. It has the most beautiful lyrics and they just resonated with me. Even if I try, even if I wanted to, my love, my love, my love. And it, it's just amazing how that, that, like, it still gives me, you know, goosebumps every time I hear that song because it's so beautiful and so heartwarming. And just the lyrics behind it are just so, they're just so powerful. And it brings a tear to my eye when I think about the song because I think how, how beautiful that is and how much that can help somebody just listening to those lyrics. So, yeah, that, that's kind of what helped me get through it. And then actually doing it and taking it step by step, coming out to each individual person. I feel like that made a dramatic difference once I first come out to the first person. It got easier and easier until it got to my parents. And then that was the big the big jump. That's kind of going, hey, mum, I know you think you've known me for all these years, but you haven't. And that, that was the scariest thing. But yeah, that's that's I feel that's what helped me get through it. Hold up, wait a minute, let me stick my finger in it. <laughs> Forever Seen asks, um, how old were you when you first realised that you were bisexual and how did you first experiment with your sexuality? Um, I, can, I can actually remember this. Um, I was about 12, 13, I think. Um, I remember me and my friends were playing Blocky123. Um, me and a friend hid in the same place and one thing led to another and we, we kissed. Um, it was, it was very strange. Um, from there, other things developed later on through the years, but um, yeah, it, it was like, it was just from me playing hide and seek, which sounds like a dirty innuendo, but literally I was playing Blocky123, which is a version of hide and seek if you haven't played it. Uh, basically, I've got a question from one of you guys on Instagram. I asked you guys to message me, and one of you guys asked in the messages if they could send a question and I said yeah, why not? Um, so this is from Aaron 603 Michael and he asks, have you ever been to the USA? If not, are you interested? And where in the States would you like to visit? To answer your question, um, I would love to go to America. I have never been. Um, one of the things what I've always wanted to do in America is eat because you guys have a lot of food and all of it looks so tasty. I really, really want to try a Philly cheesesteak and I really, really want to have a New York pizza and I really want to go to Tennessee have barbecue and I want to go to Louisiana and I just want to have all these different foods and enjoy every single one that's all I want to do I want to eat and I want to be fat that's what I want to do in America I want to eat and be fat because that sounds like a happy time um but uh, the place where I'd probably most likely visit first is Virginia as my girlfriend actually has family over there and we'd probably go and stay with them and then I would like to venture out and see all the other cool stuff what you have there Hedge had oh is that hey hey beige 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 I don't know how to pronounce your name I do apologise if I'm butchering it do you prefer the same character as done for a woman for example do you like blonde haired men and also blonde women um 
I'm kind of like strange on this one because I like everything. I'm not, I'm not really like, if someone's attractive, someone's attractive. I've never had this preference like, I want to date a blonde girl, I want to date a girl with brunette hair, or I want to date a guy with black hair, you know. In a day, someone's beautiful, someone is beautiful. I'm not gonna let, like, because you can dye your hair, yeah? You can't, you can't, like, dye someone's personality. Like, if someone is beautiful on the inside and the outside, I am happy to date them. You know, that's that's just me. I don't I don't really go into those deep characteristics of, like, oh, they've gotta have blonde hair, they've gotta have blue eyes, they've gotta have pale white skin. Like, I find that everything is attractive and everybody, depending on that person. So, yeah, I don't really have a preference. I think. Guys are beautiful when they're beautiful, and I think girls are beautiful when they're beautiful. The last question comes from uh, Yo Jashini Reddy. I am so sorry for butchering your name. I do apologise. Um, how do you come out to a judgmental family? Now, this is this is a, this is a question which I want to put a lot of effort into. I want to really talk about this because I feel like this is very important, and it's probably one of the hardest things for a lot of people to come out to their family when they kind of have their own critique of gay people they're slightly homophobic now i want to talk about homophobia as a whole i feel like there's like there's like degrees of homophobia there's people who are homophobic and then there's like the in-betweens where people are just not educated they don't know anybody who's been through that so they don't really know how to handle it so with that out of our mind let's talk about my dad so when i i came out the scariest thing I had to do was come out to my dad because I remember the day, one of the days where I, I was going to come out to my dad, I came home and I walked into the kitchen and he was with his friend and they were joking about how gays and, you know, faggots and basically saying, why would you want to be bummed, that kind of thing, that's gross, it's disgusting and basically I, I ran upstairs and I cried because I, I just thought, if I tell my dad this, he's going to hate me, he's going to feel like I'm disgusting. He's, he's basically gonna not want me as a son. And that's hard. That's hard for anybody to take. Um, especially if your whole family is like that. Um, but the thing about people, when they love you, is they, they can surprise you. They can, they can change their views. I'm not, I'm not gonna say it was all hunky dory when I came up to my dad, because it wasn't. It wasn't, oh, son, that's okay. It started off that way. I cried, my dad hugged me and all that. And then within the next couple of days, he changed and um, he was really funny around me and then I asked what's what's your problem and he said really brutally that he felt like he failed as a father. And that was that was hard to take. That was that was that was deep. That like, like yeah. Um let's just say I fell out of my dad for a long time after that. But it took him a while, it takes time. This is the thing, like people expect to have instantaneous results. Me and my dad are actually better than we've ever been, now. And it's because he understands me, he knows that. He eventually came out and said, he goes, I, I regret everything I said to you son. He's like, if anything, you're more of a man now than you ever have been, because it takes courage to do what you did. It takes courage to accept who you are. And I feel like, to come out to a judgmental family is you've got to take it step by step, one person at a time. I would say go with the person you think will be most accepting and kind of go from there. But don't do it if you're in a situation where you are at the age of 15, 16 and you can be thrown out your house because I will always advise that you should only ever come out if you're in a safe place because you know, I was I was 19, so I could go get my own place. I could I could like look after myself if I got thrown out. But when you're that age, you can't and you don't want to be in that situation. I would say for a judgmental family, you've got you've just got to take it step by step, person by person, and give it time. It takes time for them to really accept it, and it can take years. Um, so, yeah, talking to them, expressing yourself, write them a letter, tell, tell them how you really feel, because sometimes it, it takes that for someone to understand you. So guys, if you did enjoy that video, please do give it a thumbs up, because it means a lot to me. Um, for everyone who's still here, because I know a lot of people do piss off during the videos, um, thank you. I do appreciate you watching to the end. Um, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Love, peace, and chicken boots. I'll see you next time. Oh, shit!